Hi, I'm Phil Vincent, and welcome to Chapter 3, Connecting the Data Dots to Achievement. Uh, we've got a story. As a matter of fact, all of our introductions start with a story, but this one was one that we found really interesting. Um, we were in the office, and the phone rang. Uh, there was a principal, a very conscientious principal, was calling us and wanted to inform us of something. We were going to go and collect data in their schools uh, a little later in the uh, spring. And he let us know that, well, we've already done data collection five times this year. Five times. They had taken time, either from students, teachers, or uh, parents, to collect all sorts of data uh, to try to uh, just to, to, to have this to hopefully help make some good decisions. And that as the spring was going on, especially as they moved into later spring, there was going to be three additional data collection days or activities that needed to go on. Now, what's interesting is that there are three protagonists in this story, all of them having concerns and having merit. Number one, your data director, your data collection director. This is a person whose job it is, is to get a lot of data, data to help us make decisions. And a person that has this job wants to get as much data as possible so that we're really sure we know what's going on in a particular school or school district, uh, depending on how far it's mined down, perhaps even in a classroom. Then we have the principal. And what the principal is concerned about is, I've got to get all this done because the central office is looking at me, and uh, they will be checking out what I'm doing, and I've got to get all this done. And then the third protagonist is the teacher who is thinking, oh my gosh, I'm taking all this time away from my classroom and I'm getting all this data, but my real question is, will getting all this data help me improve the outcomes for my student, which of course is probably a very important consideration of the principal. So you have all three people who have concerns about data, not that they're afraid of getting the data, but what is all this data going to do? How are we going to use this data to make a true difference in the achievement of our students? and perhaps even in the climate of our school, in the connect, connection with our parents, and multiple uh, dimensional ways of looking at what schools are about. We're going to address this in this chapter, and we're going to address this using many, uh, perhaps, of strategies that you have used within your own schools. For instance, perhaps you are a PLC uh, school. You have your professional learning communities, and you're uh, taking data, putting into that, trying to uh, apply that data. Perhaps you're doing school-wide positive uh, behavior instructional supports or, or school-wide positive uh, behavior supports. And you're, uh, you, that's a real focus of your school. You're trying to get data to make sense uh, on what's going on with your school in that. Perhaps you're a school that's very active with response to intervention and you're, you're looking at, I need data in order to help the students that are struggling most. We're going to show you how data can be applied within those realms, but also we may need to think a little deeper about this. We're going to learn about the capacity of data. And this is interesting. How much data can you take? I mean, is it possible that the more data, the merrier? Or should data be more focused? Uh, what about a fear of data? Who hasn't been to a doctor's office before and been a little bit concerned about what is the doctor going to tell me uh, uh, about my test? Uh, the same thing can be in schools. Am I doing a good job? Am I not doing a good job? What do I need to improve on? And finally, we are going to address how to organize data where it becomes meaningful. We will also talk about the importance of triangulation of data from parents, parents based community members too, uh, principals, teachers, and putting it together to where we get a, a really a complete picture of what's going on in our school. And we call this the triangulation of data versus the strangulation of data. And it's at this point, before I end, I want to make one other important point. Some of you may not be comfortable with data or statistics. You may not be comfortable with quantitative numbers. But another excellent way to gather data is to do qualitative work in your school. We will describe how to do this. We'll describe for you how to make a bucket list. Not that we want you to die anytime soon, but a bucket list uh, that can actually help drive your improvement. I think you're really going to enjoy this chapter. Thanks a lot.